Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. Here to discuss the basics of IRS foreign currency exchange rates, how to get that foreign currency translated into US dollars so you could get it on your tax return. Um, general rule, foreign income is usually uh, included on your US tax return. Um, if it happens to be in a, in a different denomination, you have to get it into US currency, so you use an exchange rate. Uh, there are various different exchange rates you can use. Uh, the IRS publishes their own average annual exchange rate, but you're not required to use that exchange rate. Uh, what we have found, uh, especially in amnesty type of situations, uh, sometimes the IRS exchange rate, the Department of uh, Treasury exchange rates will vary based on some other official exchange rate. Um, well, not official per se, but acceptable, which, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, but when you average it over uh, the compliance period, you know, some years it's going to be better, some years it's going to be worse, it's generally going to average out. So, uh, but important to remember, you're not required to use the IRS exchange rate. Uh, there are various different exchange rates, uh, beside the IRS exchange rate, a very common one most experienced practitioners use is the Treasury Department exchange rates. Um, one of the key reasons why is, depending on the form, uh, for example, the 8938 will say something as if like you didn't use the Treasury Department exchange rates, well, tell us which one you used. Uh, there's no need for the IRS to further scrutinize uh, your foreign reporting, so you know what, use the Treasury Department exchange rate. Uh, most people will defer to the, uh, to the fourth quarter of December. Uh, so, if you don't want to use the Treasury Department or the IRS, there's other exchange rates you can use. Um, some people will use OANDA, especially if it's spot rates, which we'll get to in a moment, uh, X-rate, and, and a few others. So, which date do you use, right? Uh, well, let's go through some of the more common income and reporting um, examples. So, when you have interest in dividends, generally you're going to use, let's use the Treasury Department as your baseline, right? Because if it's the IRS average, well, you're just going to use the IRS average. For the Treasury Department, uh, if it's interest or dividends, you're generally going to use... Um, the year-end rates. Why? Uh, on several cases we've worked out, especially when we've taken over for other practitioners, agents make it seem like just use the year-end rates. <laughs> it's simple for everybody. In addition, someone will say, well, the dividend was issued on July 4th and the interest hit my account on November 5th. But in reality, uh, it's been accruing the whole time. It's not the same as a capital gain, which we'll get to in a moment. So uh, to make your life easy and just use, if you're using the Treasury Department, use the year-end rate. <clears throat> Don't necessarily use spot rates for things like interest and dividends. Capital gains is different. Example, right? Jim purchased an item on January 1st, 2016. Jim sold the item January 1st, 2019. Those are two key dates. Nothing happened in those other dates. He bought it and he sold it. You know, if it goes up or down, that's unrealized. So what you do is you look at the exchange rate on the January 1st date, 16, you look at the exchange rate, January 1st, 19, and those are the exchange rates that you use for that. If you have to go back way far and uh, in Oanda, some of the other ones don't provide it, you just gotta do a Google research, uh, try to find an exchange rate that, that'll work that you can get for that date, keep a record of it, and, uh, and there you go. In addition to the income, you've also got foreign account reporting, asset reporting, FBAR FAC of Form 8938, Unless the form specifically tells you which way it wants you to do the exchange rate, which some of them do, um, you generally use the Department of Treasury uh, December exchange rate. You can pick any quarter you want uh, depending on when you're reporting, but most people, at least we have found here, the agents seem to appreciate if you just keep it consistent or constant using the December um, exchange rate. FBARs, Foreign Bank and Financial Account Reporting, FATCA Form 8938. Is, uh, is used to report specified foreign financial assets. If you're out of compliance and need to get back into compliance, this whole thing sounds like a big mess and a headache. Uh, services we offer here is, is voluntary disclosure and offshore compliance. There's the voluntary disclosure program, which is essentially for people who are willful or can't certify under penalty of perjury that they're non-willful. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's the streamlined procedures. Uh, streamline domestic offshore, streamline foreign offshore. Uh, there's delinquent FBAR. The IRS did away with delinquent uh, international information return submission procedures. And then there's reasonable cause. Uh, we have lots of free information and resources available on our main website, goldinglawyers.com. 
uh, you can always contact us to schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if you think it's appropriate. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.